thanks everyone for, for coming out. Uh, we're excited to be uh, sharing this with you uh, tonight. Uh, I'm David, and I'm Nathan. <laughs> um, we've been, uh, you know, we've, we've been we've been on the road with this since January. We, we premiered at Sundance, and then been um, been to Berlin and South by Southwest, and just got back from New York. So um, just you know, ramping up to the the release coming up, and we. Um, the, uh, an unconventional place we did a, a preview screening was at this um, Bonobo Refuge a couple weeks ago, uh, where we, um, we we showed the movie to some bonobos. <laughs> for real. It'll be online too, but it was, it was uh, and the primatologist. What was interesting is the primatologist told us that yeah, that they. Um, Almost everything the the big the Sasquatch is doing this movie the the bonobos do there daily and so if you keep that in mind it was, it was like a it was like a seal of approval that they were really happy um, but uh, yeah there's no humans in the film so if you want a human film uh, you're in the wrong place I mean, um, it's all grunts lots of grunts um, what else? Uh, oh and it's yeah it's the most authentic. Uh, Bigfoot film ever made. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for coming, and we'll see you afterwards. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm film critic Amy Nicholson. That was Sasquatch Sunset, and please join me in welcoming our filmmakers back down here. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, as you're sitting up, I just want to say how much I adore this movie. I mean, I feel like there are so many different kinds of movies in this movie. You know, it's a nature doc, it's a silent comedy. From their point of view, it's kind of an alien encounter film. Um, and I heard that when that Jesse Eisenberg said that when he first heard about the idea, his reaction was, and I'm quoting him now, Great, I can't wait to read it and never do it. So I'm really curious. Uh, how did you describe what you wanted to do to him? Um, well, we've, we've known him for, I don't know, over 15 years, so we, we always like share each other's you know, scripts and everything. So, um, but, uh, but we were kind of, I don't know, we were, for obvious reasons, we were kind of nervous initially sharing it, but it's, it's the kind of thing that you, wait, what? You get it or you don't, and he very much got it and saw the the uh, the, the exciting things of aspects of it that he wouldn't normally get to do with other performances in terms of the physicality of it and, and just the uniqueness of, of you know, this kind of a role. And so he he uh, was yeah was quickly on board. Well, I mean, for people who haven't seen it, you went to Sundance a little over a decade ago with a short called Sasquatch Birth Journal Two. I don't know if it's a sequel or not, uh, but if you haven't seen it, you can. It's online. It's a little bit over four minutes, and 95% of it is one still camera watching a Sasquatch in a tree as a baby Sasquatch comes out of it. Uh, you know, it's, it's much more raw film, and the costume, you know, kind of looks like a onesie. Um, is it fair to guess that that was the origin of this, or does this idea go back even further? I mean, I mean, we we yeah, for, we we've been fascinated with Bigfoot since we were kids. So uh, just something that's always been something that that that, that we've always <laughs> put in some of our movies. And in Sasquatch Birth Journal too, it was just this little short. David had an idea of throwing me up in a tree with a really bad Sasquatch outfit, and I sit up there for about five minutes, and then the baby falls out. <laughs> but it was a, it was sort of like a, you know the idea of like. Every footage of Bigfoot that you see from even the most famous, which is the Patterson Gimlin film, which is where the silhouette comes from, or anything that you see online now, is just always Bigfoot lumbering or walking or kind of hiding in the woods. And so we would always joke, well, what else is the Sasquatch doing? What is it doing when no one's looking? What is it, if it's a real animal, a real thing, it has to have a family, it has to have a life, uh, it has to do silly things and sad things. And so David started writing a script off of those those ideas and those jokes and just uh, evolved over time. Well, when I was watching it, it, it kind of felt like proof of concept of the thing that's really strong about this movie, which is it, you know, how much we as an audience kind of want to invest in and like empathize with this creature that we've all kind of been fascinated with forever. And I had this question that I was kind of toying with in my head as I was watching the feature, which is, 
Am I looking for the human in them, or am I looking for the them in, in me? <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, we, well, both, because I think what fascinates us, um, uh, you know, about uh, like the Bigfoot lore is the way, the way it kind of represents the kind of um, gray area between human and animal behavior. And, uh, and our connection to the to the natural world, and so I think that's where and, and you know there's so many things that you know we see our dogs and cats do or other animals, and it's and it's just it's completely normalized. But then when you have these mythical creatures doing it because of their human-like qualities, it's really uncomfortable. And there's something both I don't know anywhere else. Well, why is it uncomfortable? Because we're animals as well. So it just kind of it just kind of led to um, a, I don't know uh, diving deeper into that as we. And, and, and exploring the, the absurdity of that, and, and, and the poignancy that can come from that as well. Well, I, well, as you were writing it, I want to ask. I mean, first, what did the script look like? Um, well, it's uh, it's not as long as a as as a, a human script. <laughs> okay. Like it doesn't it doesn't say grunt 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 or anything like that in dialogue. But it, but it was very it was very descriptive in all the I don't know emotional beats and. And just and and, uh, and just clarifying the tone because for you know there wasn't like an easy comp for this we could say it's just like you know uh, nothing, especially nothing nothing recent so the the film uh, I mean the script needed to be you know really specific in in terms of the tone we're going for especially as we you know kind of jump back and forth between like the 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 uh, humorous moments and and the and the more um, uh, emotional beats but. Um, uh, but both in terms of getting, you know, the, the, like like uh, the, the cast involved, but then for I don't know, every, the financiers, the crew, every, just everyone on the same page totally because it's such a, you know, a, um, you know, a, a distinct project in that in that way. And, and, and from the start, we always knew that we wanted it to be from uh, the perspective of the Sasquatches. We didn't want it. I mean, there's lots of Bigfoot movies that have been made. That, most of them are not that great. They're either like family films or they're horror films, and we 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 really wanted it just to be. And they're always from the perspective of humans, so we just really wanted to focus on their, the interior lives and kind of um, approach it as objectively as as, as possible without, without judgment. There's no shame in these creatures. You know, they're just like they're just animals. So. Well, did you guys have an idea in your head? in that first writing stage, like what they would move like, what they would sound like, and if you did, did it stay exactly the same when the actors came in, or was there more like collaboration to figure this all out as a group? Well, the, um, I, yeah, I mean, I had general ideas, because it was a combination of, you know, building off of what, uh, as kind of a baseline, what people are familiar with, with, with their expectations of what, what a, a Bigfoot does. So they're not the best. Yeah, <laughs> using that as an entry point, and then, and then we, you know, we grew up watching lots of, uh, I don't know, uh, primate documentaries and things like that. And so that was a big influence on both the, the story and then and their and their behavior. And then and then other um, and then other movies that were that, that had um, uh, eight eight straight creatures in it, like 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 2001, very different movie. But the Dawn of Man sequence is a huge influence on this when we watched it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just grew up watching it a million times, but then, like, with, you know, the cast and everything kind of, like, reference that, that a lot. So it, it was pretty specific in the script, but then, you know, like every, like every film, with, you know, when she get the cast involved and everyone's rehearsing, everything is kind of elevated and, and you, everyone kind of built on their, you know, performances from that because we needed it to function both as a, they're all a singular you know, species, you know, to, so they're consistent in that way, but then have, um, all have individualistic, you know, qualities that, that make their personalities distinctive. You know, so, we, so we came up with like um, some a very simple kind of vocabulary, and then I think we even made it even more simple. So that it, but it was just like a couple of grunts and inflections that went up and down, and then um, and that was based on on some primate videos, and then we uh, came up with this way to call like, to each other with this whooping. That kind of worked itself out in um, in the rehearsals, and I think we got that from like howler monkeys. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so it was just like David said, just once we all kind of got on the same page, it was really easy to kind of like, on set, we weren't directing uh, the technical part of it. We were we were really just directing like a normal movie with all the technical stuff. We had all figured out and kind of built these characters as creatures before, and we were able to work on the more, um, you know, normal uh, emotions and 
that sort of thing on, on set. Well, and Jesse had brought in a, move, um, a movement coach who uh, he'd worked with previously on, uh, who, who was, we'd studied under Marcel Marceau. And, um, and so that really helped getting everyone, you know, this kind of uniformity with their, both the physicality and the vocalizations, and also just getting everyone comfortable with each other. Um, just to, you know, just feel comfortable going, you know, going feral. <laughs> Well, yeah, because I, you know, I couldn't help thinking watching this that in some ways it looks like a pure acting school exercise that, like, somewhere probably in LA right now, <laughs> it's like all the you know, like people doing grunts and, and whooping. But also, I mean, if somebody was in, inside the suit, I imagine there must just be like a, a freedom and kind of being visible but disappearing too. Yeah, I think I think um, you know, since Dave and I have been making movies since we were little, we were always wearing costumes and, and playing around with them. Um, you know, different, I mean, like the, the original Sasquatch suit we did, we, I don't know how we made that, but it wasn't, wasn't very sophisticated. And so this was a really fun experience for us to like, work with professional um, makeup effects people and, and kind of go through that process. And, and um, you know, it, you always hear the stories of people sitting in the chair all day. It, it, you know, we knew that we wouldn't have this opportunity that often. And so it was like two hours and it's really heavy and it's it's a little warm um but you do feel like you feel very you know hulky and and kind of like a, a beast inside of it so it's the shoes are like very heavy and very big so it's it's hard to not lumber around um and so that i think yeah like uh you know it sounds cliche but yeah losing yourself in the in, in the costume is pretty easy Right, because, I mean, how did you come up to make the decision to not do this in CG? Because, I mean, even the butterflies in this film are real butterflies. I, yeah, I think, we, we, I think, um, just to, because we're taking these, these, you know, these, these mythical creatures and wanted to ground them with a, with a certain sense of naturalism and, and relatability so that you can you know, connect with their, their human qualities on, you know, on an emotional level and, and be invested in them like the way we wanted to. Um, yeah, approach it as naturalistic as naturalistically as possible in that way. So I think, uh, yeah, we, we from the start we knew we wanted uh, the prosthetics, uh, just the old school prosthetics. Um, uh, I mean, you know, motion capture all that's great, but for this film it felt it felt right. Um, it felt interesting, you know, having the, the you know the, the the whole like old school creature suits and then shooting a lot of times though that when those are done they're you know they're shot on sound stages or more controlled environments and there's something interesting that's about like going, doing that in really remote locations that way. It made it a real challenge because of weather and, and, uh, and, you know, the elements and everything, but, um, but it, it, it kind of added a certain legitimacy to the creatures and the same with, you know, like the, the animals, um, and all those, the things, uh, we, you know, we just wanted to give it a, 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 a real sense of realism in its own way. Yeah, I mean, some of my inappropriate questions I was wondering were like, A, did you feel like you were going feral by the end of the shoot? And B, like, how bad did the costume smell by the end of the shoot? Uh, the, the, the second question first. The, the effects team did a really good job of, um, you know, cleaning them every night. Um, and then it was funny, sometimes we would walk around and they'd look too clean, so they'd rub a bunch of dirt and leaves on them, so that we'd look like we were living and sleeping out in the wilderness. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think we went feral. Like this was, it was it was a very difficult difficult uh, production. Just technically, you know, working with these kind of costumes and putting them, you know, out the elements and, and just all sorts of tests. And uh, the weather and the elements were it was just really difficult. But um, everybody was in it for the for the same reason. Like it, there was a, a pure joy in making this movie. It was one of the most collaborative things we've ever done. And I think. Every day we felt like we were getting something magical. Maybe it was just because we were watching clay animals <laughs> wander around, but it felt like uh, it felt something like something special. And so by the end, everybody was like, "This is the best thing well, ever." Yeah, they, well, we all knew it was like a, yeah, it was unique. You know, just every day there was a new a new encounter with an animal or just some crazy thing happening. And so it was, you know, it was just every day was something that none of us had done before. So it was it was really fun in that way. I, I found myself wanting to add like a moral dimension to things and then telling myself that wasn't fair to do to these characters like you know like your character the alpha male i, I wanted to 
yell at him to be like, stop being so horny, start worrying more about the mountain lions around you. But this film doesn't operate on a traditional moral scale. No, that was it. We wanted to, yeah, we, we wanted to operate as much. I mean, you know, there's a gray area with it, but it keeps, you know, approaching it as, as uh, with, with as, as little as human judgment as possible. And in terms of, yeah, their, the, the way, really approach it through their eyes as much as possible in terms of their, their, their logic and their, their behavior. Um, but then, yeah, finding those ways that, that, you know, where they, where we can, I don't know, see some human traits in them, or, or at least the uh, other animal traits in them, and um, and, uh, and and make, yeah, make it relatable, but we're not focus on any judgment. Yeah. I think one of the most rewarding things in, in doing all these screenings and sitting with the audiences is seeing um, how invested they are in the characters, especially in the second half when it becomes, you know, Riley and Kristoff's moment as the, the mother and child kind of enduring this, 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 uh, this this plight and um I, th I you know that was like one of the things we were worried about before because it's 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 crazy costumes and it's very easy to like disassociate as an audience with those kind of elements you know like why we didn't ucg and etc and so like to hear people got get like sad or you know really um invested in in, in these moments has been uh, been a, a great great thing for us so. Well, yeah, and I, I felt in a way like you were toying with us at, in a way that I really appreciated, you know, because you've seen movies, you've seen movies about people encountering you know, beasts, and you're kind of expecting to see an arc of evolution, you know, like there are scenes where I thought, oh, cool, they're going to discover the wheel, or oh, cool, they're going to discover fire, and you refuse to let the movie become that kind of movie, you know, you really insisted on being like, no, uh, this is staying true. Oh, yeah, no, God, it, we thought that it was, I mean... You know, there's a fine line with it with it all it's all, you're kind of making it your own rules ultimately but we didn't we wanted to avoid like anthropomorphizing it, them in those ways like there was there, like uh, there, early on when we were showing it just to some friends when we were when we were editing they were saying like they were, they were like saying I'm, I'm so glad you didn't have them dance at the campsite you know? like, <laughs> that, like they would have been like that, the movie would have died <laughs> if we did that. no they're animals they're not going to do a cute dance sequence they're animals and they're reacting to the you know the emotional impact of this the music but but not in a human way yeah i do want to talk about that scene in particular because i think that scene is so powerful you know especially hearing music for the first time i mean I want to know how you decided that Erasure would be the first song that they would hear. And I, and I also want to know, like, I, I want to just learn more about the emotional arc I felt like they were going on. You know, there's joy, there's tears, there's anger in, in, in experiencing another civilization's art, I guess. Well, we just, I think in, when it's writing, it just kind of wanted to be open to the full spectrum, you know, and, and embrace, I mean, everything, I don't know, most everything we do kind of has a mix of kind of comedy and, and pathos and just kind of just depending on the film that kind of we just it's a very intuitive process which way it leans and we just whatever whichever direction feels kind of more i don't know truthful to us and uh, uh in in the moment um it's, it's kind of is, is where we where we lean and but this one had you know i don't know it just um so this one had a wider spectrum than some other stuff we did it just it just inherently funny you know the, how um, the, the more, the more, the broader comedic moments, and so we felt like wholeheartedly embracing those. And then, but, but then that would, you know, if that's all it was, I felt like the movie would get thin. And, and so we wanted to look at, you know, just the whole spectrum of, of the human condition, basically, you know, but, but through these ass watches and be, be open to the, you know, the, the, the more tragic beats, uh, in, you know, in, in equal measure. So we, I don't know. So those were, it was, a, it was important to cover all of that for us. Um, uh, I don't. It, I think like the campsite scene, you know, because we've been teasing humans for a while, and we never wanted to show humans. Humans were kind of like it was like the inverse of what a normal creature movie would be. Like the humans are kind of the mysterious thing in the woods, and the thing that you never see, but you just kind of see the impact of of humans, and that that was just enough to rattle them. And so the campsite was cool because it was. The first time they like we made sure the tent and all the colors there were like really vibrant colors and things that they made in that scene in nature. Um, you know, when they're eating a bunch of candies, so it's like yeah, sugar everything. rush and all this sort of thing. Everything at the campsite we wanted to be un unnatural colors, basically, you know, to just to contrast everything they've been ex exposed to. Um, and then just really wanted a song that just felt very unnatural, you know, just with, with very straightforward lyrics that was very unnatural to them. Yeah, they they would actually wrote the song 
in the script. Um, like, like he always had that idea for this, this, you know, electric music type of thing. What, well, just we're just like I don't know, just something you just love and hate. The simple emotion that was felt. Yeah, I felt like that was what it should be for that. Well, when I saw that boombox on the cassette tape too, I thought, oh, this is a period piece. Yeah, it's like that? around 1991, I think. Right, right. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I it just well, I like. Uh, um, I mean, that's when that song was from. But then also just just like the, uh, the that jam box. Um, just I don't know. It, it, it would be so boring if it was an MP3 player. Like, yeah, like the analog quality of a cassette. It just felt like it needed to be that, that sort of thing. Tell me about coming up with the rituals we kind of get glimpses of in the film. You know, the funerary things, the, the twisting of grasses. I mean, I saw for just your, your short about the Sasquatch that you, you know, talked to an anthropology department at UT and you also interviewed, I think, like eight Sasquatch research groups, which also had me wondering, do they agree on what they believe is true about a thing none of them have met? No, none of them have met. Well, yeah, because you at a certain point you're kind of riffing, you know, you just, um, uh, well, like, so we, so part of it, like, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, if you look online, especially on YouTube, you know, there's, there's, there's different interpretations of what, uh, the people, there's lots of videos where people find, like, a pile of branches in the woods and say, oh, this is a Bigfoot nest. Clearly, this pile of branches in the woods is, is a Bigfoot nest. Or they find some twisted twigs and say, these are Sasquatch glyphs. <laughs> and they, you know, they mean these things. And so, um, or the reason you've never found a, a Bigfoot in the wild is because they bury their dead. And so it was kind of taking those those things. And same with the, the tree knocking. So, um, uh, yeah, the tr like there's lots of videos of people uh, with just campers out and they'll hear, you know, in the middle of the woods and they'll hear some knocking sign in the distance and say, oh, those are Sasquatches banging sticks on trees to, you know, to communicate with one another. And, um, and so not just, not, we, it wasn't just to like name check those, you know, those, those kind of, those, 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 those uh, like tropes of, you know, Bigfoot lore. It's all just, they, they seem to fit well in into the narrative and kind of building that, that world out. And I really like the idea of the, the communication with, with, with the tree knocking is kind of like, there's something so, uh, so kind of heartbreaking about like sending this message out and not giving anything in, you know, in return. And it kind of, more than the knocking itself, I like the, the kind of the waiting after they knock for hoping to get a response. What was the hardest day of the shoot? The river stuff by far, it was tough. Just because anytime you do anything in the water, it's. It's, and it was, yeah, and it was, it was meant to be a stressful scene, um, and, and so it was the most, yeah, it was the most complicated part of the movie by, by far. I also, I mean, thinking that you did shoot this in the real woods, thinking of you wandering around, uh, wandering around Central Park yesterday in your costume, I, it, I'm, I, I'm curious, you might not be able to know the answer to this, if anybody just drove by, spotted you, and now, through like rumors and stories, while you were shooting this film, you have become part of the lore, part of the knowledge base. Uh, yeah. Where, so where we shot was up in Humboldt County, California, which is um, from the epicenter of Bigfoot lore. It's where the highest concentration of sightings are. It's also where it's like a, a, a big weed. Uh, the weed mecca of the world. Yeah. There's a correlation, but. Um, uh, and people, you know, it's really hard to get to, and, and it's beautiful. It's where these tall redwood trees that are thousands of years old are. Um, but it, I think the people that live there, you know, they're kind of they're they kind of like being a little bit more off the grid. And uh, we were left alone. We were left alone. Yeah, yeah. Also, we were shooting in remote spots. Like one day, one day, uh, the only time someone came by our set was the, it was a scene where. Jesse's character has this kind of sexual awakening and he's standing in this mossy tree aroused and a, a, a jogger ran by but didn't, it was just completely nonplussed, it didn't do that. <laughs> so, um, and so other than that, we were, yeah, no one really, we were worried about that, they're going out there, you know, I don't know, yeah, but we were surprised, I think everyone kind of keeps to themselves and, and we were isolated, so it, it was easy. We should wrap up so we can go to the party, but I do want to ask just as my one last question. I mean, I assume brothers just in general have your own shared language, but after this project, do you have a new way? Like, could you communicate an actual idea to each other in a few grunts and, and hoops? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I, I did an act in it, so I can't grunt. Um, but uh, I think every movie we add to our, uh, 
uh, our, our, our short hands more. But um, we'll see. So time will tell what 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 we'll think of this. Although we, so, yeah, someone told us a story where they after Sundance they saw somebody do the um, the the. Oh, I wanted to give a shout out to to Christoph Zajac Danik who is uh, oh, is over here. Uh, well, on that note, let's all go upstairs to the reception and celebrate this movie. Uh, thanks again. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for being here.